Good evening, Trinidad and Tobago. I am Maria. I am Solange. And this is the Scoreboard Women's Panel, where women in sport levy topics in sport. Right here on ACT. We are here today with two guests to discuss football. And our guests today are Vanetta Flanders and Linda Bramble Thompson. Both of these women have loads of experience playing football, refereeing football, doing administration in football, and are also both teachers and so are now sharing their expertise and their passion for the sport with everyone who they teach. So we're very excited to bring them for you this evening. Welcome to the show. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. It's Thank a pleasure to be here. here. Mm -hmm. okay. The pleasure is ours. I am really, really excited to get to know more about football because, I mean, I've got to be honest, uh, I know football just like everybody else, you know, it is the number one sport globally. But what brought you ladies into football? Um, for me, um, I got into football by an accident, actually. You know, I always liked the game, I followed the game. Um, but I was asked by the late Dr. Mohammed, the late Mohammed Issa, to um, form a group in point, a school team which I did, and from there, it was history. You know, um, we started winning, the game got more exciting, the passion grew, and we moved from being a school team to a club team, and then I moved from that into the national program. So, you know, it was a natural progression, but I never regretted a minute of it. <laughs> what about you, Linda? Well, for me, um, sport has been my life. I have been in sport from as far as I can remember in primary school, right through. I didn't play football in primary school, neither secondary school, but after I left secondary school and I started training college, teacher's college, when I came out of teacher's college, a friend of mine who was also a national player, Miss Cassie Moore, we formed a women's team in Kuva Professionals, and that is where my football experience started as a player. But as a fan, a football fan, I have always been a football fan. And after that, maybe playing for about two years, I got into my real passion, which was <laughs> refereeing. Oh my we goodness. were looking for female referees and a friend who was also a FIFA referee, he asked if Cassie and I wanted to take the course and the rest was history. And you are into administration as well? Yes, I'm into, yeah. I never played football actually. Yeah? No? I've never played football. I dabbled a bit on the, a bit on the field in school days, mm -hmm. but I never was on a team or anything. So um, my only um, experience with football is through administration. You know, um, getting the team together, doing everything it takes to make that team win, putting things in place for them to win. Oh, I'm so That's excited to have you on this program, especially <laughs> yeah. from that perspective. Yeah. Because a lot of times when we look at sports, we say, okay, you like playing the sport. Maybe you're retiring, maybe you have extra yeah. time, whatever the case may be. But because you enjoyed playing the sport, we now want you to administer the sport. Right. And those are two different skill sets. Thank you. That's right. That's they are right. not mutually that's exclusive, right. but don't necessarily <laughs> yes. mean that they go together. Yes, so that's right. as an administrator mm -hmm. and someone who has that skill set, mm -hmm. what do you see um, that you bring to the table that's different from someone who's doing it? We love the sport, so we'll do yeah. whatever it takes, yeah. Yeah. right? But what sort of things would you say for someone who's getting into administration mm -hmm. that they should really focus on to make sure that that part of the job is done properly? Um, well, okay. Um, in administration, in sports, females, um, to be more specific, um, the hardest thing is to mediate the personalities. Okay? okay? So that is something that you really have to be good at if you want to get into administration with females in particular. You know? Um, I think one of the benefits of being an uh, administrator as opposed to just play a turn administrator is that I'm able to look at things objectively. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't get into the coach's business. I don't get into the players because that's their job. I'm able to separate the two. Um, sometimes it's a, a player turn administrator because they've been in the game, they feel the need to interject, they feel the need to, to you know, kind of get into the coach's business and advise the players mm -hmm. when really and truly it's always, it's always more important to separate the rules mm -hmm. and responsibilities to make the entire team, you know, run smoother. Linda. Yes. Being a referee requires a lot of, a lot of physical components That's right. and psychological components. Yes. How do you manage that? Well, I am presently retired now and I'm 
and like Vanetta, into administration. But when I now started, it was really hectic. A lot of things that you have to give up. And the thing about it is, because of the game, it's physical in nature, being fit is one of the key things that you, you know, you had to do. I remember training even for Christmas on my honeymoon because I was preparing for under 19s in Canada. Yes, and I'm sure I, that your husband didn't like that. No, but I, I had him training too. So I have some pictures where he was just flat out, but he was always very, you know, supportive, you know, being there to help me along with sometimes with, but because we had kids. So he will look after the kids while I go out to train. Mm -hmm. Right. But it, it was it it was very challenging. A lot of things that you have to give up because, you know, um, opportunities that presented itself, you had to ensure that you were fit. You had to ensure that you were on top of the game. And it took training, let's say, almost every single day of the week mm -hmm. for me. It was, mm -hmm. it was really difficult. And uh, fitness has always been, although I was into sport right through, the type of fitness that was needed for refereeing, it was always a challenge for me because you must pass that fitness test in order mm -hmm. to move on. At least they would say the, the fitness test is your passport to wherever you want to go. And right now that is one of our problems that we are having at the local level where a lot of our um, FIFA referees are off the FIFA panel right now because of fitness. Mm. How but do you it, feel the first time that you got into the panel when you passed the fitness test? It was, it, it, it was, I was really elated. It was something, when I, when I just got into refereeing, I, I didn't know anything about the FIFA panel and all the, the, the benefits of being a, a FIFA official. All I knew is that they were looking for female officials to offic officiate and I said, okay, why not try it? I've already played. So I could, you know, try it and I liked it. But the thing about it is my first experience, Skinner Park on the background. And it was, you, 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 you did the course, yes, but the practical experience, you don't get it. And the thing about it is refereeing is practical. Yeah. You, can, you, you can sit with that book and learn all the laws of the game. But when it's time to, to really apply it on the field of play, if you don't know how to do it well, then... It doesn't make sense that you have all the knowledge up there and you can't apply it. So I, mm -hmm. I remember making quite a few mistakes on the line and it was horrible because people will tell you all sorts of things as a woman, do what, what they want you to do, <laughs> what you should be doing, where you should be, and, but not on the field. But you know, after getting into it and you know, um, getting more accustomed to, to the refereeing and gaining experience and you know, being more efficient, you tend to, to get the respect. And by the time I was on the FIFA panel, I had already gained that respect, both in the male and female aspect, because in the local scenario, you had to do both male and female games. Wow. How do you cope with the male part of it? Coping with the, with, with the male aspect of it, yeah, um, sometimes there are things that you don't hear. Sometimes you, you learn to ignore because if you, if you take on every single thing somebody tells you, you're going to get into confrontation with players. Because everybody on the outside, they tend to know the game more than you, the official on the field. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. Always tend to know the game more than you. And this time they know nothing, you know. But <laughs> they're trying to tell you how to do. And sometimes I would just say, I am the professional, not you. But, you know, it's interesting, though, because um, to become a referee, you have to do a course. Yes. To become a coach, you have to be licensed, mm -hmm. but there's no prerequisite really to become an administrator. The Very onus true. is on you to educate yourself as a sport administrator in TNT. There's no um, specific course, there's no guidance. You're thrown into it. Yes. So you have to learn as you go along, you know, your mistakes you make, you have to learn by your mistakes. There's no preparation for it. Nobody sits down and tells you, okay, this is what you do, this is what you don't do. You have You're to make a mistake and you got to swim. Yes. Right. <laughs> you turn into you have to swim. <laughs> you know, and, and it's good that Vanetta talk about administration because with me, I have, besides being in as player, as active referee, I also with the administration because I started my school, my girls' football team at school. So I was coach, manager, everything. With, and, you know, to get the girls, we started from some, some of the girls didn't even know how to kick a ball. 
and some wow. of them went on to be national players. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I find passion in that because a lot of I have a lot of students who actually learn to play the game and they have moved on national day and right now they're in I, right now I one of my favorite students who well, she was supposed to be here with us this morning she is in UTT now on scholarship yeah. doing um, her sport admin, administration sport, yeah. Excellent. Right? Yeah. so and when she started the child could even kick a ball and she went on to be captain of the Pfizer bar team that won so many national yes, titles yes, yes, yes. yeah they saw my player and just took Bloom. my player <laughs> yeah <laughs> Now, Vinata, yes. you mm -hmm. express that there isn't a lot of training or the specific, I mean, there's level one coaching, level one, level two, Correct. all these things. That's Correct. not set out for administration. No, it's not. It's not. Um, I think, do you think part of the reason is that administration is the invisible force? Exactly. Um, <laughs> probably get knocked for this, but, you know, um, with all the recent controversies happening, you know, if the team does well, congratulations to the coach, mm -hmm. you know, congratulations to the players. There's seldom a, you know, somebody saying, you know, well done managers, you know what I mean? Because we have to go above and beyond the call of duty many times. And um, if things go wrong, where was the manager? What were they doing? Mm -hmm. Anything goes wrong, you're responsible, and you have to answer for it. Whether you're there, you're not there. You know, so um, it'll be nice for managers to get some credit sometimes. But <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Go right. <laughs> Can you, you know? list a few of the things that mm -hmm. either players, spectators, anyone would see mm -hmm. that they don't realize it's management that put that in place? Oh, boy. Um, there's so many, so many things. Um, okay. Simply sitting in the background and getting all the forms and everything done for a tournament the team gets off on a plane and goes but there's a lot of paperwork that happens in the background to get that um that actual little thing done you know what i mean mm -hmm. um visa forms sometimes you have to sit down and do 30 visa forms on your own you know don't make a mistake because if you make one mistake then one player don't get to get a visa you know what i mean um it, it's very very challenging i mean um with my experience um, when we were heading to our World Cup qualification, simple things like going to a camp in the States with no money. I actually had to cook breakfast, lunch, and players for 30 persons wow. for a two-week period. You know what I mean? And that's if the players ridiculous. don't eat, they can't perform. Exactly. So that's mm -hmm. something. Exactly. So I wasn't at the training ground mm -hmm. because I had to be in the kitchen. You know what I mean? Um, these are some of the kind of things that as managers, well, in the female program, you have to do to mm -hmm. make things work, to make it happen with the limited resources that we have. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Go out there, get sponsorships, even for bananas at the end of the training session, stuff mm -hmm. like that, you know what I mean? So, well, those are a few things that also yeah. come to mind with me. The mm -hmm. team is drinking water. Is uh -huh. the team in their kit? Does everyone look uniform? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, has everyone arrived on time? Yeah. Does everyone yeah. have the necessary um, paperwork filled out, say, for water or for mm -hmm. any of these stipulations that you're going to yeah. get tested after a match? Yeah. Who's yeah. who's doing all of these things the because yes. any one of those things that yeah. slips up yeah. you can have a whole scandal you know exactly yeah. exactly and i think that we often overlook the part of the administrators mm -hmm. and uh, our experience here is there is always some administrative course going on somewhere mm -hmm. but administration i think you have to come down to the detail of the sport because yes. you may be a good administrator for football but you may not know anything about rugby Correct. Correct. right and then sometimes we say, well, I am a sports administrator, but uh, when it comes to the technicalities of the yes. sport per se, it's like yes. we don't know how to perform. Yes. And then as Linda say, we got all the knowledge from the books, but when it comes to the actual sure. work, yes. that's right. yes. it's Correct. very frustrating. And especially mm -hmm. when sport is something that is volunteer yes. yeah. and people don't understand yeah. that, that you have a mm -hmm. job that actually pays your bill and then you're doing this. Correct. And, and it's very true. I never thought about the importance of the managers up to this morning. Yes. Uh, because I come from a system where everything was put in place for me. Yes. But as you say, when the Adley wins, it's always the coach. Mm -hmm. But in order for the coach to have peace of mind, you know, and yeah. for the athletes to perform well, there is mm -hmm. someone behind all of that, which is the administrator. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. um, actually, um, the administrator's job is to implement the wishes of the coach. Yeah. So when he gives you his guidelines, his program, his schedule, you now have to implement everything flawlessly. Or as you rightly said, a scandal could ensue.
you know mm -hmm. so you have to be very meticulous mm -hmm. when you're going about doing your job definitely mm -hmm. you know you know what i find one of the things that you know really gave me some you know good insight into sports management when i did my my uh, my masters in sports management mm -hmm. you know i i got a lot of tips on how to actually manage my own team right mm -hmm. and and even even with doing that sports management program and I did my research well back into football refereeing mm -hmm. again attracting mm -hmm. and maintaining women in, in football refereeing and that um, afforded me uh, an A and I ended up have, um, getting the opportunity to go to the um, NASAM sport conference in June uh, um, this year wow. in Canada yes with my um, mm -hmm. My lecturer, Mrs. Cobra, Cobrales, and yes. we went and we presented it in, in, at the sport conference in Canada. And, you know, everyone was really excited about, you know, that female aspect refereeing in, in, in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. And I even got some offers to work with some persons who were actually trying to do some research in, in, in that um, aspect too. Mm -hmm. And we are also in the process of working on it, but I have put that aside right now because of my DPED program that I'm in right now but we are looking to even publish the work, right? And you know, once, as Vanetta said, if you have some sort of formal training, then you could, you could use what you, what you have learned to you know, assist in, in actually getting things done. But when you have to, to fish and you have to, you know, as you say, you're swimming on your own, then sometimes you may have slip ups and then people will blame you. Yeah. Can you tell us some insights mm -hmm. of the program that you have done how to attract referees oh, and men. maintain them. Attracting and maintaining um, yeah. women in, in football. Yeah. Because um, what, I, what I am, what really, you know, sparked me on to, to, to really look at that was in Trinidad, we have all these football, football playing, but we hardly have females to, to, to service the football, the Correct. female games. Correct. And what happens with the female games, especially at the lower end secondary school football, you might have a, a, a player some player refereeing the game, some parent, some mm -hmm, friend, mm -hmm. and the game is not given that type of attention that it, it needs. Even if they send official officials, it would usually be those who have been in the system for a long time and they don't have the physical capacity to keep up with the game. Or the interest. Or exactly. Or the interest. And they just say <laughs> or it might be those some young ones who now come out and they really don't know. So I decided to to try and find out what, you know, what really why yeah. some, because we had women who would come in the program and after a while they would just you know fall, fall away so i realized um one of the, the major things that you know a lot of women talked about was the fact that having that challenge you know being accepted in a man's world one of the things a, a lot of them could not deal with that challenge being accepted in a man's world so they decided to that's it i, I don't really need this then some of them were talking about some of the places that you have these games, there are no facilities for women. Sometimes you just have to jump in your car by the side of the road, change your clothes, Correct. nothing at all. Wait, wait, Absolutely. no facilities right. for women? No, a no. Lot of, because a lot, of, a lot yeah. of these these games are played in community grounds and so forth. The only time you would really have facilities for women is if you have the game at the stadium or something like that. Some other facility mm -hmm. that really have some, but uh, a, lot, a lot of times these women would be at games at the lower level when they now start. So it's Skinner Park background, some mm -hmm. other community mm -hmm. grounds, so there are no facilities. Yeah. And then sometimes it challenges the fitness, keeping up with that fitness test, a lot of them. That, that is challenging. Yeah. Hold that, that cha thought there. We need to go on a break. <laughs> okay. We'll be back. All right. Now changing your question. What I would say, Steve, I, is this. What what I, what my first question was, and roll back that tape. I made my debut for Crystal Palace against Tottenham Hotspur. My responsibility was to get the ball and make things happen offensively. Pull it by now, tell me now. In all the time we've played together, I've always been the decoy. Welcome to Field of Dreams on ACTN. My name is Steve David, and I'm your host. Good evening, 
Sunda Begu, welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on ACT. And it's always a pleasure to be in your company every Tuesday evening between the hours of 8 and 9. Welcome to the new season of Football 101. I am your host, Joshua DeMatos. Well, it's time for your weekly football news update. Hello, me, Messi. Unfortunately, uh, kiss, kiss the badge, kiss no. the badge. Uh -huh. What's that? Welcome to this edition of the interview. And as you can see, I'm not alone on the set. I have Marcus, a Liverpool fan, and I have Shaquille. <laughs> Welcome back. You are watching the scoreboard women's panel. We are here discussing administration and refereeing in football. Um, we are having a very good discussion, looking at all the different aspects that go into uh, the tenacity that's required to get the job done. Now, Vanessa, you were expressing to us how in administration there's yes. very little recognition. Yeah. And I don't know if because I come from an athletic background that we would recognize referees, but I think that is also an area where there isn't recognition. So, Linda, do you think that generally referees are regarded as the athletes that they are and have to be? For referees in Trinidad and Tobago, a lot of times they are not regarded for what they do. I don't think that um, people see the, 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 the effort that goes into you know, preparing yourself to become a top athlete. And yeah, you have to be an athlete to mm -hmm. be to at referee. the top as a referee. Yes. Right? And um, I know that a lot of times referees get abused, misused, and a lot of times some of them feel we, we lose a lot of good referees along the way because of this. And the recognition, as, as Vanetta was saying, a lot of times the, the, the team, you know, succeeds and they, they say, okay, well done to the coach. The referees are never recognized if they have a good game. It's mm -hmm. always the things that if they make a mistake or if things didn't go in, the, in favor of this team, the referees always chastise yes. a <laughs> negative light. And yet the referee is, it, the, is the player that doesn't have a sub, exactly. that plays all the minutes. Exactly. They may be playing back to back, whether it's in the center or as an AR. Mm -hmm. And if 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 um, there is no referee, then no, no game. game. Okay. I have right? a question though. Mm -hmm. If let's say that you start refereeing a match now, mm -hmm. but in the middle of the match you feel sick or something happens to you, do you have to continue? Somebody else can take right. your place. Somebody else can take my place. Um, most of the times now, especially at um, professional level, there are four officials. Um, well, I'm speaking about local. Um, yeah four officials who are appointed to a game. We have the referee, two assistant referees, and the fourth official. Mm. So if something happens to the referee, then the fourth official, that's his job of taking over. And if anything happens to any one of the other officials, it's the fourth official job, who usually is there taking all the, the records for the game. He, the referee, doesn't have to go out on a limb to um, continue. Mm. It's just three officials, right? Really can't continue, then take over and then you may have to uh, clubs to get somebody to assist. Well, so. that brings me back to administration mm. again, because that's something where the referees are operating mm -hmm. in their capacity. Mm -hmm. The coach is operating in the coach's capacity. capacity. The players in the player's capacity. Mm -hmm. The commentators in the commentator's capacity. Right. Yet all of these people have to be somehow communicating with each other mm -hmm. so that you're presenting one, one game and one, one event. Mm -hmm. So where does management come into that? Well, actually, our job starts before the game in terms of preparing team list, all right? Um, but we don't really have any influence on who the referees are or we don't dictate what happens with the referees because they are, you know, a law on their own, you know, when it comes to the game, really. So, you know, our job really concentrates on our actual team. Mm -hmm. We don't really have anything to do with the other team. Right, so everything that we have to do is just ensure the team is there on time, our start list is there on time, mm -hmm. um, uniforms are there, right, the team is in the proper frame of mind. We have to try to balance that off before they actually go onto the field of play. You know, any issues that a player may have before, after, during the game, that's what we deal with. Mm -hmm. Anything that a coach wants during, after, before the game, that's what we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. You know, so we actually just about 
settling everything down so that the team, is, the team, the coach, and everybody's in the right frame of mind to go onto the field and do their best game. Right. That's what our job is. And that would be for management. Yes. Right. So even above and beyond that, yeah. there would be the administration of the conversations between the managers. Are yes. there usually management meetings? Um, do, who, who, ad, who administrates that and who has that happen, say, in the setting of a tournament, for example? Okay, well, in a tournament, um, you have what you call TAMS, right? Um, all the teams are called into one meeting. Right at that meeting, we play our uniforms just to make sure that colors don't clash on the field. Yes, mm -hmm. I see that. Show. Goodness, <laughs> yes. as a player, I think yes. that'd be difficult, and I mm -hmm. could not even imagine refereeing. Yes, <laughs> making sure all our players are fine in terms of their yeah, passports is intact and they qualify to play for the team. Um, again, uniforms. You know, it's just about when we meet, is clearing everything up so again, so that when the competition actually starts, we don't have to have any issues that's going to kind of rattle what's things happening on the field. Right, everything so. runs smooth. Speaking about this, that match coordination meeting. So yeah. when you have that tournament, even the, 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 the refereeing and aspect is dealt yeah. with. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I've been everything to a lot of match coordination meetings. So you have all the teams, so all the teams, there, the managers so that, there. So that nothing clashes. Everything. And mm -hmm. even though you have those meetings, sometimes things still happen and you still have to make changes. Which right? have some of the challenges that both of you have come to have to overcome to reach where you are today. Oh gosh, um, because I know you haven't been a, a easy road. No, 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 no. no. Um, one of the things that we face is not being listened to. You know, as women in the profession, um, it's very difficult to get the air of personnel. All right, um, our administration sometimes because um, we don't know what we're doing. All right. That's one thing that spurred myself and I guess Linda to further our, educa our education because mm -hmm. um, she's a physical education teacher, but I'm, I teach art. So what is an art and craft teacher coming <laughs> to tell me about <laughs> playing football or administrating? You know what I mean? Right. So um, I started with the Olympic Committee. I did the sports admin course, basic yeah, and advanced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I did the too. FIFA postgrad diploma mm -hmm. and I'm currently doing the master's That's program. Wonderful. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I, for me, and by empowering myself, um, I can now put myself in a position that, hey, I know what I'm talking about, you have to listen to me. Because, you know, as I said before, as an art teacher, yeah. so now I have two things. I have my qualifications, and mm -hmm. I also have the experience to back up what I'm yeah. saying to you. You know, so that's one of the main challenges yeah. that we have as women in the field. Often you know? that is a difficulty because you're doing yes. something, you feel that this is the right thing, this is yes. what has worked for you, yes. but then when you have to defend yourself, yes. you know, you, you really need to know that not just because it works, but you've studied it, you have the credentials, yes. you have the yes. experience, yes. it's a full package yes, it's that very you're important presenting. Because there's very few female administrators, there's very few females um, in the positions where they can impact change in sport right now. And I think to do that, we, I call upon all my sisters mm -hmm. in the fraternity mm -hmm. to empower yeah. yourself. You have to empower That's yourself, right. you know what I mean? That's right. Yeah. yeah. And you touched on it before as well, that the administration is a skill set that is specific. You mm -hmm. know, there's, there's a certain way that is to, to do a spreadsheet. There's yeah, a cert, there are KPIs mm -hmm. that need to be met. There are stakeholders that need to have information. Right. Right. There are bills that need to be paid. Yeah. All these different things that are happening. And you also yeah. mentioned that while getting all of that done, yeah. there are a number of personalities that also need to be managed. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's right. Yeah. Definitely. That's right. And definitely. it's challenging because mm -hmm. if you look at it carefully, you will realize that after you have gotten your education, yeah. the core of who you are didn't change. No. Just because, because you know, you still have the passion yes. and the determination yes. to give back yes. That's and right. to be the best this. of you yeah. in your yeah. field. Yeah. It shows now that before you didn't have the qualification and now yeah. you do have the qualifications. Yes. Because yes. often we, sometimes we don't listen to one another. Mm -hmm. right. You know, you could be saying the same message without the master degree or the qualification. Exactly, now, exactly. they will pay more attention exactly. to you, you because you have some sort of that's qualifications. Right. That's right. And that's then right. all along you keep saying, it's like, but this is what well, I have been saying, saying since, since the beginning. Exactly, right. exactly. Right. Since exactly. the beginning. That's right. You know, and, and sorry, and then as a woman, you also have to balance your home life with, yep. if, because you have the kids that you need to take care of um, as a manager and you're available seven days a week, 24 hours, because mm -hmm. your phone rings, you have mm -hmm. emails to attend to, and um, during my tenure with the senior team, you have players from all over the world. Right. So that there's no time that 
you can tell them you can't call me. Mm -hmm. So you have to be accessible 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All right. Um, I did this without a stipend, without a salary for five years. So it's a lot about putting money out of your pocket. That's and right. I think that's something that happens mm -hmm. in sports generally, yes. not just mm -hmm. um, that's right. female alone. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. But you know, once, you, once you're involved in a sport mm -hmm. and you go Actually, out there, you have to put out money. That's right. You have to give players money. Mm -hmm. um, you have to put more gas in your car, you know. So it, it, it is very, very challenging. So apart from giving your sweat and your blood <laughs> and your tears, you have to put out and your money. As well. <laughs> right, and, and you know, I could, I could um, attest to what um, Vanetta was saying as far as the challenge, because when I started in refereeing, my children, they were very, very young, okay. right? So, like, when I go on tournaments, my little son would be crying all the time. Mommy, yeah. when you're coming home, when you're coming home, yeah, yeah. right? So I had my sister, she would see about them at times, my husband who would take care of them at times, and I even had their babysitter, Mrs. Fletcher, who would, would take care of them at times. So sometimes you have to give up that, that, that family time in order to, you know, to be, and sometimes I would be, like when I went to the Women's World Cup, I was out for a whole, a month and a, a half, month, yeah. because I spent two weeks in Canada because I was working with the Canadians. I didn't go with any Caribbean officials. I was working with um, two Canadians, and I went to Canada for two weeks in order to prepare before I actually go to the World Cup and I was there for a whole month. Correct. So a whole yeah. month and a half of family yeah. life that you, you give up. And as Vanetta said again, when you are into that sport, because with me, with my students, my, my, um, my van is the school bus. Yeah, correct. Yes. <laughs> right? Which I should not be doing, but I put my gas in there. I, I have to buy boots, give children money, everything. So once you have that drive and you have that passion, you, you know, and now that I am off of the FIFA panel, I have gotten into administration because I am into referee instructing and assessing. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. right? has, has there ever been a time where you ask yourself, why am I doing this? Yeah, some, some, sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes yeah. it, 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 it gets very tiring because you see, um, sometimes you, you want to do something with the family and then you say, okay, no, I have this, I have this, I have that. Mm -hmm. Because it looked like with, with me, with the, with the referee instructing and assessing, because I was still, even though I was off the panel, I was still traveling and, you know, trying yeah. to manage CONCACAF, CONCACAF level and FIFA level. I, I had some, some stints at the FIFA level also. And school, home and work and also involved with assessing and um, instructing in Trinidad and Tobago also. So wow. it, it's, yes, it's <laughs> huge. And even, yeah. even at work now because, yeah. um, as I, I mentioned, I, was, I am doing this DIPED program because it's, if you don't do it, you can't get promotion. But I, <laughs> right, so I have to do it. So I have to put every single thing on hold right now. I have taken a little break even from the yeah. um, instructing and assessing mm -hmm. locally. So what is something that motivates you? What's your go-to when you're thinking, okay, really, why? What are things that remind you why you're here, why you've been so successful, and what is set you above and beyond? What? For me, um, I have grown into a, a very spiritual person. My God and my church comes first in everything. And you know, I always, always hear this. This is, this is one of my mantras. God is in control and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens <laughs> me. And mm -hmm. that keeps me going. That keeps me, you know, want. Because at times, you know, yes, you're accustomed to doing this. And you give it to somebody else to do and you realize as my mothers always say, if you want it yeah. done well, yeah. then you have to do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I would say, all right, I know I have to do it. I will do it. And that, that keeps me going. <laughs> but for the, me, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. But for me, um, I have seen the power of sports transform lives. Huh? Mm -hmm. I've seen sports um, yeah. create for persons the opportunity to educate themselves where they would not have been able to do that before. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen the power of sports to, you know, create, give some people financial well, independence. Yes. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. I've seen the power of sports remove people from situations that could be potentially dangerous, like drugs and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen sports really transform life, gives people opportunity and give them hope. You know, and for me, that is one of the reasons I stay in it. I mean, I've had a lot of disappointments, like like Linda. Um, like one of the things I remember is my daughter stood away in my trunk when I was about to head to the airport. Oh my goodness! Um, because 
as she said, I'll be gone for a month at a time. And especially during the last World Cup campaign, I'll be home, I'll be home for a week. And that week was just busy preparing for me to leave again, 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 again. you know. And she just couldn't take it, right? She hates football, to be quite honest with you, you know, <laughs> because football took away her mommy for a long right, period yeah, of time, mm -hmm. right? Um, and another reason, sometimes you get very, very dejected because after you put all that blood and sweat and tears, there really is no thanks, huh? You thank the coach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Huh? The I coach mean, not, not even the coach well. sometimes, but the, you know, yeah. um, people really just don't recognize your contribution, the efforts that you do. That's you know, right. you're not you're not looking for it really. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's nice to get a pat on your, your shoulder because um, it's, my experience with the World Cup campaign was ridiculous. Right. You know, I can't even go into everything that happened during that time. You know, and you had to hold it together. You can even let the players know what's happening. You had to be the one to bear all the responsibility of everything going wrong because they have to be in the proper mindset to just go out there and play. You can't mm -hmm. let them know certain things that happen. You have to bear that burden and responsibility and just get it done so that they get to go out there and play, you know? Mm -hmm. And then when you get home, you know, if, if there's one thing that happens, then you, you, call, on, you call upon on that, you know what I mean? So it's hard, Definitely. right? But again, every time I try to move away from it, it keeps pulling me back. No, that's right. <laughs> yes. It keeps Something pulling else, me yeah. back. Well, with that, we yeah. do have to take a break and then yes. we will be pulled back. back. Yeah. And we'll, we'll discuss a little bit about the efforts that are made and the ways that we can really motivate each other to continue and work as a team in all aspects. You're now changing your question. What I would say, Steve, is this. But, but I... My first question was, and roll back that tape. I made my debut for Crystal Palace against Tottenham Hotspur. My responsibility was to get the ball and make things happen offensively. Call it by not tell me In all the time we've played together, I've always been the decoy. Welcome to Field of Dreams on ACTN. My name is Steve David and I'm your host. Welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on ACT and it's always a pleasure to be in your company every Tuesday evening between the hours of 8 and 9. Welcome to the new season of Football in 101. I am your host Joshua Demattos. Well, it's time for your weekly football news update. Hello, me, Messi. Unfortunately. Nice. Uh, kiss, kiss the badge, kiss no. the badge. Oh, oh. What's that? Welcome to this edition of the interview and as you can see I'm not alone on the set. I have Marcus, a Liverpool fan and I have Shaquille. Yes. Welcome back. You're watching the scoreboard women's panel. We are here discussing football, administration, refereeing. Um, the women that we have here with us today have actually been integral in coaching and organizing football teams for Trinidad and Tobago. And we're now looking at what it is that motivates women to have the tenacity required to stay in sport and make the difference that they know sport can make in the lives of youth and, in fact, everyone. Well, I, I think one of the, the greatest things that will motivate is your passion and your drive, you know, mm -hmm. to, to be that, that change agent. As Vanetta was saying, you know, you see lives transform. You see, you see your impact on, on well, I will, I will take for my students because um, I encourage a lot of them because as I am into physical education. So that's, that's, and that's the teacher that, you know, the children have that love and that affinity to. And, you know, a lot of them, because the, the school that I teach, most of the children, their passion is in the sporting arena and so forth. It's not that, you know, more on the academic side. And for me, getting them involved in some sort of sporting activity changes lives, right? So it's that drive and that passion that you, you know, you think that you can be that change agent that keeps you going. Even with the, with the, with the refrain, right? I, my, my aim is that we have our women's panel, our FIFA panel, fill our eight 
referees and our eight assistant referees of four and four because right now we just have two two females um, in the like of Cecile Hines, who mm -hmm. was an ex-student of mine, mm -hmm. and uh, Miss Crystal Sobers. Mm -hmm. We only have those two. And we had a lot before. We have, there are a lot of women involved in Tobago, but I think the, the, the problem is fitness, because mm -hmm. right now we lost a good one, Miss Trisha, Trisha Devines, and also Julian McDougall. We lost both of them because of the fitness test. We still have Carissa on, so we just have three. Mm -hmm. So my, mm -hmm. my, my drive and my passion, as soon as I am finished with this <laughs> DIPED program, because I put down everything for the DIPED program, I would like to start that female drive. My passion is to encourage females in sport. And what mm -hmm. needs to be done to get more female in the panel? Well, I, I, the first thing is to, to let them see the benefits of being involved in, 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 in female refereeing because there, there are a lot of benefits. Which are? It's a lot of hard work, but okay. For instance, we have a lot of um, opportunities now internationally, right? Because when I now started, all we had was the under-19s, we had the Olympics, and we, ha we, we had the Women's World Cup. But now... We have under 19s, under 17s, un well, not under 19s anymore, under 20, under 17s. We have Women's World Cup. We, we have Olympics. We also have our CAC Games, Pan American Games. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of opportunities. And as Vanetta said, financial empowerment. You get paid in US dollars. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a lot. Mm -hmm. So besides that, you get to travel, especially with, if you go to a FIFA tournament. It's first class yes, travel correct. and you stay at <laughs> the, be best the best five star hotels, hotels. <laughs> the yeah. best and you are paid, ladies that is a lot of incentive you are paid yes. in us dollars we um we are not paid as much as the men but now when i start when i when i went to the world cup it was a it wasn't it was a little bit now we had sonia um done and come from canada she was in charge of the women's program and she fought a lot so the women now the the, the monies that the women get now it's it's a lot more and now we have miss Kerry sites and i know that she's working harder mm -hmm. to get to, to bring it up to what mm -hmm. the, the men are paid for a fifa tournament yeah. right so it's a lot of benefits mm -hmm. and you know you, you you get to increase in that self-confidence when you when you meet other people from outside you know that travel things that you would never have afforded to, to on your mm -hmm. own it's there, there are a lot of opportunities so once they can see that i know that it's not just that yes this is what you can gain but you have to know that it's a process yeah, you need to, it's yeah. hard work but mm -hmm. if you are willing to there are persons there who are who have been down that road before who would like you to even supersede what they have achieved mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. is my passion from mm -hmm. an administration point of view um, how I do we get mm -hmm. more women to to stay to go into administration mm -hmm. and you spoke about the balance yeah. a little bit with coaching and administration coaching yeah. and management yeah. where coaches often get a lot of the credit but also mm -hmm. coaches also do a lot of the managing in many cases yes. where they do not have the administration, administration support mm -hmm. um, for me I think education um, educating our stakeholders um, a lot of schools for example right um, they don't put any emphasis on sports so you may have an athlete in the sports, in the school, sorry, that may never live up to their full potential because the school itself, they don't see sport as an alternative. They don't see sport as a viable option for a young lady in particular. Mm -hmm. So that no emphasis is placed on that. Um, at the homes as well, parents who send their kids out, their girl children out to kick, foot, kick a ball just like that. Mm -hmm. Because as far as they're concerned, there's no future in that. You know what I mean? So I think that... Um, we need to re-educate our stakeholders, the schools, parents, um, even the private sector into investing a little bit more mm -hmm. into the women's programs. And I mean, although I'm in football, I'm now speaking about all sports mm -hmm. because the women, as we know, don't really get the sort of investment needed right. and the branded needed mm -hmm. um, to develop the sport or an athlete mm -hmm. as it should, mm -hmm. you know? So I think that once we start putting in the work to you know, create that brand, a woman's brand in sport, I think only then we will get more persons coming into the field. And, you know, we also need to do an outreach program as well, like to the rural areas and that kind of thing. Nobody goes down to some of these rural areas. They just don't know how wow. to yeah. become 
part of a program. They just don't have the know-it-all to start a program, you know. So again, I think education will be a vital, a key role in building and motivating players to be part of a program. And Vinata, I'd like, sorry to cut you there. Yeah. Um, I just want to reiterate, as you'd mentioned mm -hmm. before, that you actually were not a football player. No, I wasn't. And that is something yeah. that I think <laughs> is so important yeah. for us to go forward because we speak yeah. about the education and we speak yeah. about these things and to be an administration that is an education that you pursue. Yeah. And how much do you think that we can improve sport and make it more dynamic by allowing people to know that to be in sport does not mean Players, that you yes, must be play. a player. Um, again, through our school, our, we need to kind of utilize our school systems a little bit more. All right, I mean, just as when we do career fairs, we have career fairs in school, mm -hmm. but who's, who has a, a, a boot on sports? Nobody. And showing you all the different um, job opportunities there are in the sports and industry. I've never seen one, you know, so this is something that we probably could start doing, you know, again, promoting administrators, promoting sports in the school and showing the different options. It could be done more at the pre-teacher level and that kind of thing, you know. I am glad that you mentioned that careers in sports. You know, just last year I did one of those in, in mm -hmm. Holy Faith Convent in Coover. Okay. Actually, they, I did a presentation mm -hmm. at their career fair of the opportunities um, in sport. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that that's a good idea so that, you know, you, you get all the other things that, that you could become, yeah. right? And then you don't get the opportunities to see what you could become in sport. Definitely. Yeah. Right? Even even with, with the, the education, I think one of the things, especially to the, the administrator in sport, women should be given more opportunities, like to be um, part of the, more board, board yeah, members, boards, board, members. Right, board members and stuff like that because because you find that there are some women they have the know how they, they, they have all the, the the abilities but because sport is so much male dominated you find that all those top positions are dominated by, by mm -hmm. men. And that decision making right? process That's is important right. process. especially to diversify sports That's right. because you're saying right. a career in sports That's that right. could be a referee, it could mm -hmm. be a player, it could be a coach, it could be a manager, it could be a physiotherapist, right. it could be right. a massage so therapist, many, so many it could be a marketer, now. it could exactly. be so sport, law, many sport medicine, mm -hmm. sport law, everything. Exactly. Yes, Every there's a thing. lot of opportunities now yeah, in sport. And, and, and you know the children really don't because yesterday I was doing I was doing careers in sport and physical education with my class. And then when we watch, miss so many things, they really don't, they really don't know that it's only those who really have a kind of passion for sport, they, they would know. But a lot of them, they do not know. And as you said, education is one of the key towards um, future development. Yeah, that you yeah. can find a niche within mm. sport That's yeah. right. that yeah. doesn't necessarily have to do mm -hmm. with your physical exactly. abilities. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even on that, sorry, mm -hmm. you have game in sports as well. People are making a lot of money, money. through gaming. Mm -hmm. I mean, you may have the the person who can't really run on the field and, and, and kick mm -hmm. the ball or mm -hmm. jump over right. a hurdle or something, <laughs> but they can yes. Yes. do it technologically. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, they could develop games, you know, so there's a lot mm -hmm. of different areas that you can work within the sports and industry and make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that um, sense of promotion and marketing, because one of the things that um, in the, the when, I, when I did my master's program, one of the things I had to do was to develop a plan, right? A recruitment plan. And one of the, the drives that I that, that I would like to propose is that whole marketing of the whole sport. You you get those persons who have achieved a lot in the sport and you use them mm -hmm. as, as, as icon, as mentors. Yes, mentors. Right? Correct. You take your caravan and you start at the school level. Start at the school. You go yes. to those schools where, where you have all those those that have their teams in the SSFL and you know you start there and you give them the opportunity to see what sport can you know give to them. Teach the yeah. value so that's that right. when yeah. students, children, athletes mm -hmm. are developing themselves mm -hmm. that they understand there is a value that's and that they right. can market that yeah. value. They can Correct. create a personal mm -hmm. brand and that's they right. can present mm -hmm. themselves in a way that they will be heard. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we talk about the struggles that we've had yeah. and the purpose of those struggles is that those coming after us do not have the same, same struggles. struggles. They'll exactly. have struggles. They'll yeah. be different ones. Exactly. <laughs> because that is one of the things with, with the young referees now 
I, I tell them, I said, hear what? I had a lot of challenges when, when I was in your, your shoes. So now I am trying to ensure that things are better for you. Right? Right. You know, you wouldn't get the, because look like, for instance, with the instructing and assessing. When I was active as a referee and you go to a tournament, after your game, the assessor will sit and we had a, this open forum and it was like they're beating you with a big stick. Sometimes you, you, you dreading to, to, to go into that room for an assessment. Some people coming out in tears. I'm talking about big men and, big men and women mm -hmm. in tears. But now we have a more humane approach. You know, we try to, to show you, okay, you did X, Y, and Z wrong, but here are some ways in which you can improve. Yes. And you're not, you're not beating people with a big stick. You're just giving them <laughs> tips to improve so that you, take, you, you keep the good things that you have done in the game, mm -hmm. and then you take the tips in which to improve on your next performance. And a constructive criticism yeah. is something that more people could work with. That's right. Because often you say, well, if you can't handle it, mm -hmm. right? But then you're losing good people. People, exactly. Who could develop and become greater people. That's right. Mm -hmm. When really it's a perspective that when we change that and we realize that we want to build people well, that's instead right. of break them down, that's right. that we're mm -hmm. going to be much more successful. Well, that's right. Mm -hmm. Ladies, you, 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 you have invested a lot of yourself mm -hmm. in the sports. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I am curious to know, how do you manage your personal life? <laughs> because sport takes a lot of time yes. and it's only 24 hours yes. Right? Yes. you can't yes. make more time no. No. the things that you listed I'm pretty sure you're working with a 32 hour day <laughs> I wish it must be <laughs> I wish it's, um, it's... you must have a good support system you must mm -hmm. have people who understand the dynamics mm -hmm. of what you're involved in and willing to support you um, that's the only way that you can survive you know mm -hmm. of course you'll have your challenges because you'll have your arguments you know why is it you have to be out as a woman this hour the night or you know that, that, that kind of thing you know you'll get that mm -hmm. you know but um, um i think once they realize what you're really doing and they're really passionate about it mm -hmm. i mean they don't have a choice but to understand and to conform and to support you know because um it's a sense of pride as well even for your family when they see that you've been working with a team or working with a, a program or an organization and that program they have accomplished something so it's also a sense of pride that comes to your family when you work alongside, you know, teams program and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, um, it's challenging, but I think they all start mm. to believe in the hype as well yes. <laughs> eventually. You know, yes, and, <laughs> and it's true because, um, as you say, I wish if I had 32 hours in my day because sometimes <laughs> it, it's it's really really hectic. I must say that my husband is very supportive in the sense that he leaves me to do my thing. Mm -hmm. He understands, he takes his little corner, and he leaves me to do, he knows that I have X, Y, and Z to do, he, he, he leaves me to do my mm -hmm. thing. Even with the children, as she said, the pride, they know that mommy going on will cup, whatever, you know, to boast yes. their friends. Mm -hmm. And even when we have tournaments down here, mm -hmm. they get to sit down in VIP and so forth. It was really, you know, really that pride for them. Mm -hmm. So I try to balance it, but to be honest with you, a lot of times my, my, my family life suffers but they, they learn to, to, to live with it. All right, we just have about four minutes left. Yeah. So if there's anything that you would like to relate to our viewers, a message that you'd like to leave them with, you could take that time to do it now. Okay, well, um, what I would like our viewers to, to know, yes, sport has positive aspects to it. It can transform lives and it can make you into better individuals. So parents, it's up to you to get your, your children involved, teachers and even administrators and the government officials. Let's make sport our number one priority. And for me, um, parents, especially if you have children who have a passion for sports, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to encourage and don't be afraid to support because we have seen the students or the athletes whose parents give them the most support become the most successful. successful. So. True. Support your kids. <laughs> yes. All right, you are watching the Scoreboard Women's Panel, where women in sport levy issues in sport, and we'd like to thank you for joining us. It was my pleasure.
absolute yeah. pleasure speaking with you. Yeah. And I feel very motivated that we're going to go on to do great things as That's we work right. together. So. That's right. <laughs> and as Nelson Mandela said, a sport has the power, power to, to change, change the world yeah. and to unite people in a way yeah. that little else does. That's, that's my right. favorite quote. Yeah, that's my, that's <laughs> that's my, that's my favorite quote. That's my mantra. And with that, <laughs> really we does. have come to the end of another edition of uh, Scoreboard Women Panel. Remember to be viewing us on the last Tuesday of every month. And until we see you again, be good, be happy, be blessed.